Hey gang, Scott here. So this video, uh, there will be no photos. There will be no technique. There will be no sliders and, and, and tools and things like that. Uh, this is about my photo workflow. And the reason is your questions. I've gotten many, many questions, some through comments and YouTube, some through email that it's like, Scott, what's your photo workflow? What tools are you using with your photography? And uh, to answer that, I have to take you on a little bit of a, a, a journey through the mists of time as <laughs> from uh, what was going on, you know, gosh, 10, 12, 13 ish years ago to what's happening now and how I ended up where I am currently. And, and to that end, you know, a couple of things like just up front, this will be a description of how I ended up with the tool set that I use and why I continue to use them. Uh, and yours will most likely, if not guaranteed, be different. Totally fine. There's not really one right way or one tool chain that's better than another. They all have things that they offer. This is the, both the tools and how you decide to put them together. And it really matters what makes most sense for your photography. You've heard me say it in other videos all the time when I'm working sliders. The number on the slider doesn't matter, the look on the photo does. It's kind of the same way for the tools. Ultimately, the tools are things that make the photo that we want. Use the ones that are best for you to get you the look that you like, and then it, it doesn't matter you know, that you've used a certain tool to get there. I've never had anyone look at my photos and go, wow, you know, I really love the way that you decided to use a combination of Lightroom and On One with a little smattering of Luminar to get that look. Never happens. You know, never happens. So with that, um, let, me, let me take you on this journey, the mists of time, back to 2010 when I first started getting serious with digital photography. My entire world was Apple Aperture you know, back in 2010. This is the one application that I used and I had this notion that I would use one application. I wanted one thing to do everything for me. And for a time, it worked well. You know, Aperture was a, a very good asset manager, a very good editor, had adjustment bricks and you could reorder them and things like that. You could do masking and so forth. You know, not kind of masking we have today, of course, but, but we could do all those things. But somewhere around 2013 is when my photography reached a point that I needed to go beyond just aperture. And in particular, I needed layers. I, I got to the stage where I needed to have layering capability and that just wasn't something that Aperture had. So at the time, 2013, you know, well, what you would think, Photoshop, you know, layering in Photoshop. This is before the subscription model that Adobe has now, which makes you know Photoshop honestly, a lot more affordable, uh, if not you know recurring, but at least it's affordable. Where in 2013, you know Photoshop was you know, multiple hundreds of dollars, which I didn't have, so I turned to the perfect photo suite. This was you know the the early name of On One's tools. It had layering and of course a whole bunch more things, and so this became my world with a few other plugins that grew over time. You remember things like, you know, Nick Photomatix. Remember Photomatix? That was out there. Uh, some things from Mac Fun. This was pre-Skylum, Tonality, Intensity Pro. So I had all those things there. But really, my bread and butter was Aperture and Perfect Photo Suite. And there were a couple of things in Perfect Photo Suite I used in particular. It was Effects and it was layers. You know, those two things is really what got me into that software. Like, okay, I'm happy again. I've got this nice ecosystem. Things are running along. And then in 2014, Apple comes along and says, hey, we're not making Aperture anymore. We're stopping. We're going to go do Apple Photos. Apple said, well, Photos is going to be the new photo editing application. You know, now in 2023, we look at Photos. It's pretty good. It has extensions and it's it's come a long way. It's not really an asset manager. I still don't think it's the the best tool for you know uh, serious uh, enthusiasts or professionals to to manage a wide asset 
um, you know, library. Uh, but it has come a long way since it was announced in 2014. So it was announced in 2014. It's like, okay, I know Aperture's going away. Uh, I didn't do anything for a bit. I sat around and I waited. 2015 came along. Apple finally said, here's the first iteration of Photos. It was underwhelming for uh, for an Aperture user. It just it just was was not the tool that was going to be something I could use going forward. So I needed to migrate and looked at the looked at the landscape. So okay, what do we got? At the time, we had Photo Raw out there. Uh, now, Photo Raw in 2015 is not the same Photo Raw that it is today. Uh, much of the asset management that is in Photo Raw now didn't exist in 2015. And some key things for me were things like stacks uh, or things like uh, nested keywords, uh, you know, good support for you know, albums and searching. There were some things there, but it, it was different back in 2015. Of course, looked at Lightroom. And this is right around the time where Adobe was showcasing Lightroom 6 and the first iteration of Lightroom CC, which would become Lightroom CC Classic. So my timing here was right on the cusp of Adobe moving from their perpetual license to their subscription model. I also took a look at Capture One. Now, Capture One was compelling but back in 2015, it didn't have certain things that I needed. You saw earlier, I had plugins. I had things like, you know, uh, Nick and I had on one and there wasn't a clean uh, connection for external plugins. That just concept didn't really exist in, in Capture One back in 2015. So, you know, I took all those things along with all of the other asset management and editing features that I really required. I said, all right, well, uh, where am I gonna move my photo library to? You know, and the answer for me was Lightroom. That ticked all the boxes. Uh, the one thing it didn't have is layers, but I've got on one for layers. I still have that package. It works as a Lightroom plugin. Okay, I'm good to go. And I spent the better part of 2015. It took about eight months. I wrote like a 60 page document guide to help others for how you're going to move out of Aperture into Lightroom and maintain as much of your metadata as you can. You know, the, 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 the edits, you know, the, you're just not going to maintain edits. You know, the, as much as there are tools now that help do that, uh, they still have limitations. And if you're using anything like masks or more advanced things, that gets troublesome to uh, to migrate, but uh, you know, did did the did the whole migration got into Lightroom? All right, so that's how I, I started with Lightroom, and I still had on one in my pocket because uh, I I still enjoyed using uh, the layers from the Photo Suite. It was the Photo Suite at that time. Uh, I had still had. Well, I think I, I guess they'd made the transition to the Photo Raw branding at that point, so the you know, the perfect a line of products had the naming had changed but uh, it still worked as a plug-in at that time to Lightroom the entire suite so you know that kind of brings me to you know today you know where am I now well uh, you know Lightroom became uh, you know the Lightroom you know cloud in this case Lightroom classic and I have on one effects this is my bread and butter and I will go between these back and forth all the time and you're noticing Photoshop in the middle of this. Well, part of the Adobe subscription gives me Photoshop. And while Photoshop has layers, um, I, I, I use them sometimes, but more often I'm using Photoshop as an intermediary, leveraging Adobe's smart object stuff, which I've talked about in other videos, so that when I launch into plugins like Effects, I have re-editability. I can go back, I can make tweaks, I can make changes, I, I get that type of workflow. And while yes, I could do that directly with On1. On1 has you know smart PSDs, right? It's got smart photos. I could do that. The other parts of my workflow is I have other plugins. You know, I do use Luminar Neo from time to time. I don't talk about it as much uh, these days, but I still use it. I have Sharpen AI, which I will use from time to time on other photos. And so for me, corralling those things 
through Photoshop is useful. Now those are the main workflows, but of course there are other workflows too. I have uh, other tools in my toolkit. Another one I use a lot, uh, well, a lot in the sense that when I need to make a print that is large, I will be using resize photo, you know, uh, on one resize to upscale my photo and get good quality. Uh, what about uh, if I have something that's like really, really noisy? Well, I'm actually using on one photo raw at the front end here to uh, to to take care of of you know, any any noise stuff. I could use the no noise uh, standalone. I have photo raw; it's in there, so I just tend to use photo raw. But that image becomes another standalone you know image that moves into my Lightroom catalog. You know, so when all said and done, this view here, Lightroom as my catalog for all of my image where all of my asset management happens and then on one effects to augment the editing this is really you know the the core of the tools that i use uh, on a daily basis right this this is it and you know the inevitable questions that come up well scott why don't you just move into photo raw now now photo raw it's got much better asset management and all those things it absolutely does uh, there are a couple of things that I have become accustomed to and rely on in Lightroom asset management wise that Photo Raw doesn't quite have. There's a, there's a couple of things with uh, customized IPTC fields and views and there are some certain things about uh, stacks are important to me. You know, these are um, more, I don't want to say esoteric, but they are certainly important to my workflow, but they aren't necessarily important to everyone's workflow. And then there's inertia. You know, uh, in 2015, I mentioned it took me eight months to move photos out of Aperture into Lightroom and maintain all my metadata. Uh, maintaining the metadata is easier now, but I have a lot more photos now. And the value proposition for me to say, let me take 50,000 photos that are just like my professional work and move them to another tool for the sake of moving them to another tool. I'd rather spend my time doing something else, making more photos really. <laughs> so, so there's, there's a level of inertia. Uh, but um, this is, this is the answer to that question. This is, you know, what tools am I using? But it was more important to me to say, not just here's the tools I'm using, but why am I using them? And as you see, you know, some of it, it becomes, uh, you know, a decision matrix kind of thing over time. You know, certain things happen at certain times. You make the decision that is best at that time. And, you know, if the world changes enough or sometimes, like in my case, you know, they, you, the, the tool gets taken away. Aperture is gone. You know, you're forced to make a change and you end up with something that is is working for you. So um, that's that's the spiel. Uh, um, you're welcome to add comments about your own workflow. I'm really not going to read too many of the comments. Uh, and I will ask, you know, let's not turn this into, well, that workflow is wrong or that workflow is bad or you should do this. This is what's working for me now. I'm very happy with the workflow. I'll continue to use it. You have a workflow you're happy with. Great. Keep doing it. If you have a wrinkle in your workflow, you know, that's when you want to try and figure out, all right, how do you fix that wrinkle? How do you smooth it out? And maybe that's another tool. Maybe that's just a pivot in how you connect the tools that you have. So that's it. Uh, I'm going to call it uh, done for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you, you found it at least remotely interesting. A little history of, of Scott's photography tool journey. And until next time, have fun.